Hi, my name's Chris Crook. I'm from the National Geodetic Office of Land Information New Zealand. Uh, I'm going to be talking on the second part of a three-part series on the New Zealand Geodetic Days in 2000 deformation model. Uh, this is a series uh, put together for the positioning stream of the New Zealand Institute of Surveyors, uh, and it's put together by the University of Otago and Land Information New Zealand. So what I'm going to be talking about is the def deformation in the New Zealand genetic datum, what it is, and a little bit about when you need to care. So, if you take nothing else from this session, take this, that used naively, NZGD2000 coordinates are not very accurate. So naive, naively in this case means without taking account of deformation, and not very accurate means absolute position errors of more than 70 centimeters and relative errors of more than 10 part per million potentially. So I'm just going to be explaining a bit about firstly why there are these apparent errors in the coordinates, um, when you need to be aware of it. So what do we expect from our datum? And particularly what do we expect from the coordinates that we calculate in terms of that datum? I think there are two main things. First thing is accuracy. And what, what I mean by that is that if you take coordinates of two marks and calculate, say, the distance between those marks, it would work out the same as if you'd measured the distance between them. The other thing we're looking at for, from these coordinates is durability. And, and this is a, a, a more subtle concept. Basically what it means is that you can use the coordinates to relocate physical features. The coordinate represents a physical feature. What I mean by that is that if you, let's say, you located a, a buried pipe in 2000 and got its coordinate, um, and then went back to that coordinate in 2015 and dug into the ground, you'd hope to find the pipe there. So you'd expect the pipe represent, the coordinates represent the physical object, the pipe. So they've got two, two things we're trying to get from our coordinates, accuracy and durability. The problem is we can't have both of them. And the reason we can't have both of them is because of deformation. And by def deformation is, is, as we you might have seen in the previous uh, session, deformation is basically the, the movement of the Earth due to tectonic plate deformation, due to earthquakes, and so on. And what that means is that everything in New Zealand is moving, some points are moving differently to others. So if you have a, the coordinates are correct, let's say for two objects there, the correct coordinates in 2000, then in 2015, if those objects have moved differently, then the relationship between them will have changed. Either you're going to change your coordinates to have an accurate distance between them, but in which case the coordinates aren't durable, or you can keep the coordinates the same, but uh, they're no longer accurate because they no longer represent the distance between those points. So this is a di dilemma we have in New Zealand, that we can't have both accurate and durable coordinates in our datum. So the solution, very straightforward, we have two datums. So although we call New Zealand Datum 2000 the datum, it, in fact it's comprised of a number of com or two main components. Uh, uh, one is the, if you like, the reference coordinates that, that fix it to the ground, but the other one is the deformation model. And by combining those two, we effectively give ourselves access to two datums. So the deformation model relates coordinate systems that are fixed in terms of the Earth. So these are the coordinate systems that you can measure with GPS or GNSS systems, where basically we're saying, what is my physical location relative to the center of the Earth in an X, Y, Z direction? So these are fixed. As, the, as New Zealand moves in, uh, through tectonic movement, five centimeters a year, it's moving through that coordinate system. Every point on that changes in terms of that, that Earth-fixed coordinate system. So the, the Earth-fixed coordinate system, the one that New Zealand Geodetic Data 2000 is based on is called ITRF 96, International Terrestrial Reference Frame 1996. Um, 
Other ones that you likely come across are WGS84, which is a series of, of datums that are uh, also are fixed, as well as the various uh, realizations of the International Terrestrial Reference Frame in 2000, 2005, and 2008. So they're fixed in the Earth. On the other hand, New Zealand Geodetic Datum 2000 coordinates are fixed in New Zealand. That's to say that they move with New Zealand. So a, a point that has a, a coordinate, as that point moves, the coordinate moves with it. The deformation model is the relationship between the Earth-fixed coordinate system, ITRF 96, and the ground-fixed coordinate system of NZGD2000 coordinates. So what's in this deformation model? Well, there are two parts. Um, the first part is the secular deformation. That's the ongoing deformation that's occurring all the time, about five centimeters a year. That's defined by a grid across the country, which basically allows you to calculate at any point what the velocity of that point is. The other thing in the deformation model are patches for each of the earthquakes that have happened since the datum was established in 2000, or at least each of the significant earthquakes that have caused movement that would um, affect the, the accuracy of coordinates. So at the moment, in 2015, there are 10 earthquakes accounted for. Um, of these, eight of them are, are represented as, as uh, reverse patches and two as forward patches, and I'll explain what I mean by that shortly. What's not in the deformation model? Well, there's quite a lot of deformation that happens that we, for one reason or other, don't include in the deformation model. The most significant of these is, is vertical deformation. So there is ongoing vertical deformation, just as there is ongoing horizontal deformation. In our secular model, the ongoing five centimeters a year model, we don't include vertical deformation. There are a couple of reasons for that. The main one being that as yet we haven't developed a good national vertical model. We haven't got a geophysical model that, that, on which to base it. The other reason though is that vertical deformation is a lot messier than horizontal deformation. And what tends to happen is there's a lot more local movement uh, vertically rather than um, uh, broad trends that, that, that apply across the country. So even though we could possibly generate a vertical deformation model, it may not be as useful because there'll be so much more noise compared to signal for that, that model. The other sorts of things that are not included are uh, events that are either more localized or smaller, um, slow slip events, are, are slow slip earthquake events that you may have seen in the previous session um, are, are a good example of this. So these are events that happen maybe every uh, three, three years or six years in various locations around the country. They're earthquakes that happen slowly, that happen over a period of a month or so, several months. Um, there are a couple of reasons why we don't include them. The, main one being that we don't, at the moment, again, have good enough models of the, mo the deformation caused by these earthquakes. Similarly, for smaller earthquakes that have caused only minimal distortion within New Zealand that don't affect uh, uh, the accuracy of our coordinates at a significant level, those won't be included, um, as well as other things such as landslips and so on. So because we don't really know what's going to, we don't know what's going to happen with deformation in the future. So we don't know what's going to happen. So we have to maintain this model as, as events occur. We can't just provide a deformation model and say that's the deformation model for New Zealand because things keep happening. Earthquakes happen. Um, the other reason we have to maintain is because although we did our best in 2000, when we first established the datum to, to work out what the secular velocity field was, 
we've got a lot more information now and we're getting much better uh, models for that. So periodically, there's a new version of the deformation model. And what that in fact means is that we have a new version of the datum NZGD2000. So under the umbrella of NZGD2000, there are a number of different actual versions of the datum. Okay, so this is all fine and good. We've got this deformation model. What's the problem with it? Well, the number one problem with it is that most people don't use the deformation model. They don't use it either because they're not aware of it or because they don't need to. The NZGD2000 coordinates are accurate enough for them in any case. They don't may not have the tools to use it at all, uh, even if they wanted to. And they may not have the information in their data that allows them to use it, information such as when, or when coordinates were collected. So because a lot of users don't use the deformation model, or don't or can't use the deformation model, there is a sort of general expectation that even without using it, the coordinates in our datum are not just durable, but sufficiently accurate for most uses. So part of our challenge in maintaining the datum is doing it in such a way that the coordinates are accurate enough for most uses. And one of the main accuracy requirements people have is not for them to be accurate in 2000, but for them to be accurate at the time that they're using them, to be accurate now. So although the coordinates were originally defined, or the coordinate system was defined in 2000, since then there have been significant earthquakes, and we apply patches, which is basically saying, after this earthquake, there is now an, another bit in the deformation model. We have a choice of how we do that, um, and that's as a forward patch or a reverse patch. So the forward patch is the way that you kind of probably naively think about it. We're just saying, this is where it was in 2000. We've got this secular movement of five centimeters a year that happens through time. And if we have, let's say, an earthquake in 2010, then after 2010, we have another bit of deformation that we add on to that secular deformation. So the coordinate doesn't change at all. If we want to work out where it is now, if we want to convert from the 2000 coordinate, end of GD 2000 coordinate to the ITRF coordinate, the coordinate that you'll measure with your GPS equipment, then we have to add on the secular deformation and also that forward patch. The problem with that is that the coordinates don't reflect any of the movement due to the earthquake. The actual NZGD2000 coordinates don't show anything from that earthquake. You only see it when you convert them using the deformation model to ITRF96 coordinates. And that means that they can't be very accurate. Where, where in the area where the earthquake has happened, it will cause a lot of distortion. So the relative positions of coordinates will have changed a lot, but or the relative position of marks, sorry, will have changed a lot, but the coordinates won't have changed. So they're no longer accurate in representing the relative positions of, of points. To get around that, what we've proposed and what we do in NZGD2000 is to use reverse patch. Now reverse patch is the other way around. So basically, when an earthquake happens, we say, actually, this movement is significant. I'm going to apply this dip movement to the coordinates. I'm actually going to change the NZGD2000 coordinates. There's no other way to do it if we want to keep them accurate. And what's more, most users expect the coordinates of points to change during earthquakes. So, it's a, so there's not a, a huge user resistance to changing these two coordinates, even though it does have quite a big impact. If we change the coordinates, it basically means that every geospatial database has to be updated to reflect that change if it wants to remain accurate. So that's the reverse patch. We change the coordinates. The earthquake is still in the deformation model, but you only use it if you want to work out coordinates that applied before the earthquake. Then you have to subtract the earthquake deformation from the coordinates. 
And most of the time, we're not interested in where things were, we just want to know where they are now. So that's the two approaches. The forward patch is much easier to apply. We just change the deformation model. We don't have to change coordinates. It's much easier for spatial data sets and so on. But we lose the accuracy. The reverse patch is much harder to, to actually apply. It means that everyone who has a database has to update their coordinates if they want them to be accurate. But it does mean if you do that, that the coordinates have good current relative accuracy. So in terms of the current relative accuracy, speaking now in 2015, we've said that we're applying reverse patches, but that only applies to the deformation due to earthquakes. The coordinates otherwise don't reflect the movement that's happened through that secular deformation. That's only represented in the deformation model. So what that means is that coordinates that are in terms of each other in 2000 have now been moved as a, by that five centimeters a year, a year. However, that's very smooth smoothly distributed across the country. It doesn't actually distort things very much. It means they're moving together. So the relative accuracy is still quite good. It's better than three part per million over most of New Zealand. There are a few places where it's not so good. And basically this comes from the area where uh, the plate boundary runs through New Zealand in effect. So up the, the west coast of the South Island and the east coast of the North Island. And there are a few areas there where there is significant deformation, and particularly around Wellington, um, where there is both large deformation and uh, high accuracy urban control. Um, so that's perhaps the, the most likely area where you might be thinking you need to actually apply the deformation model. There is one other area where there is a more deformation than you might expect in the coordinates, and that's the area affected by the Cook Strait and Lake Grasmere earthquakes. Because in those areas, at the moment, we haven't applied reverse patches, we've applied a forward patch. The reason for doing that is that it affects a very small area, and the impact on users for uh, creating a new version of the NZGD2000 coordinates uh, is considered too great. So at the moment, those are still reflected by, or, or, or th those are still there as, as forward patches. At some time in the future, we may, when we have to update coordinates for other reasons, make those also reverse patches. But it does mean that in that, that small area, um, the coordinates are not as accurate as you might otherwise expect. So that's the story as regards how we maintain the deformation model in the geodetic datum. So the question for you as a user is, well, when do I need to take account of it? And that depends obviously very much on what your use is. And at a high level, there are two main reasons why you, uh, why you might want to take account of it. One is that you have high accuracy requirements and the other is that you have data that you're wanting to bring together that spans a long period of time. So if you need, if you need high accuracy, basically you should be working not with NZGD2000 coordinates because we know that they are distorted, even if you're in an area that's not um, affected by earthquakes, it's still got the secular deformation model there and that's quite, uh, or maybe may significant, it may be up to that 12 part per million. So if you need high accuracy, generally you should be working with ICHRF coordinates and converting them to uh, NZGD2000 coordinates after you've done all your calculations. Um, if you need high accuracy over a long time span, you still need to account for the deformation model if you want to bring coordinates together because 
Otherwise, when you do your calculations, you, you'll be trying to calculate, say, distance between two points, but it's actually a different distance at different times. And if, unless you include the deformation model in your calculations, that won't be uh, able, you won't be able to represent that. If you have got low accuracy requirements, it's a lot simpler, of course. Um, basically, particularly if you're low accuracy, short time span, it doesn't matter what you use, it'll work. Um, otherwise, it's probably best to work in NZGD2000 because generally you want your coordinates to represent physical features rather than abstract locations in a, in a earth fixed reference frame. Other factors may come into account. The first one is location in the country. So as we've seen in that previous diagram, there are some parts of the country where the deformation is quite significant. Also some areas where it's very, very small, um, particularly uh, Northland, um, which is well onto the Austra Australian plate. Um, in that area, while there is movement, everything is moving in a very consistent way, and so you could work with either coordinate system. Other factors might come into account are the extent of your area of interest. If it's a large area, then you're going to encompass much a broader range of deformation, so you may need to account for it there. And finally, the purpose for your work. Um, obviously, if you want to measure deformation, you don't want to take it out uh, by using the deformation model, for example. Okay, so we, you've worked out whether or not you need to take account. Of, if you do need to account it, take account of the deformation model. What tools are available? Well. At the moment, not very much. Um, so there are some provided land, by Land Information New Zealand, the first of which is the date deformation model itself, the, the data that defines the movements and the patches. That's available, can be downloaded from the LENS website at the address on this slide. Um, it all includes not just the data, but also documentation describing how to use it and an example uh, program in the Python language that um, that you can use as a reference code for for anything you want, you want you're doing with it, or you can just use to actually calculate it. There is uh, also coordinate conversion available uh, software available from the Lens website and survey network adjustment software, both of which can take into account the deformation model. And finally, on the LIMS website is an online coordinate conversion software. At the time I'm speaking, there's a test version of this which includes the deformation model. Um, and again, the link for that is on this slide. One other thing you need to take account of um, in using spatial data in New Zealand, and that's the fact that because we have this deformation, metadata is particularly important in your data set. And when, and when we're talking about coordinates, this is. So metadata that, that applies for coordinates that's important is firstly, when were the coordinates observed? So at what point in time do those coordinates that you observed, whether they're uh, ITRF coordinates that in an earth fixed system or whether they are NZGD2000 coordinates derived from them, it's important to know when those are observed. Secondly, what are they referenced to? Um, so if you, even though you might be uh, measuring in, uh, a, let's say, using GPS, so you, in effect you're using an earth fixed system like an ITRF or WGS84, if you're doing a survey that's referenced to an NZGD2000 coordinate, then in effect you're measuring in NZGD2000. So be careful because you need to be aware of the potential deformation in doing that. Third thing that's very important is when you're doing any conversions to keep a record of which version of the deformation model is used because that version, uh, well, that, that conversion will change with each new version of that model. So if you need to undo it or redo it, it's useful to know which version you, you had. So there you are. In summary, um, the New Zealand genetic datum provides two coordinate systems. 
an ITF 96 coordinate system that underlies it and the NZGD 2000 coordinate system which is the coordinates latitude and longitude and height in NZGD 2000 and these two coordinate systems are related by the deformation model. The deformation model is a time dependent transformation. The deformation model is periodically updated and each update is in effect a new version of the New Zealand genetic datum. Uh, and finally, if you want to do accurate calculations, right, and in that case, at the moment I mean better than 10 part per million relative accuracy, you have to be aware of deformation in most parts of the country, and you need to keep good metadata with your data. Okay, well that's, that's my, uh, a summary of the New Zealand genetic datum deformation model, how it's maintained and when and how you might want to use it. The third session in this series uh, will have Nick Donnelly telling a lot more in detail about how to do those calculations involving the deformation model. If you've got any questions outstanding from this, um, first port of call is the LINS website um, and there is a, a address on this slide for the section on the geodetic datum. That's www.lins.gov.nz slash nzgd2000. Every page on the website has a contact us link on it. So if you have had a look there and not found what you want, then please do contact us um, at that address and uh, we'll get back to you and really welcome your questions so that we can get this, keep this information well maintained. Thank you very much.